The dawn of democracy in Iraq has given millions a new voice. But it's still being paid for in blood. And two years after invasion, Western armies are yet to establish when they will leave. Basra's airport is the main base for 9,000 British troops controlling southern Iraq, including the area where Australian troops have just been deployed. You're talking about up to 6,000, 10,000 people in that, in that particular area. Big gas uh, infrastructure here. It's safer than much of the country, but insurgents can hide within range of the base in suburbs too cramped to patrol. OK, so it is an area that we are concerned with, that we can't get into there, and we do have some baddies in there that we just can't uh, police properly. When British troops head out then, they take no chances. We're going out on patrol with the British forces on the streets of Basra. And while the level of risk is nothing like that of the north, in and around Baghdad, there are still dangers, mainly from small, improvised bombs left on the roadside. And despite reports things have been quiet down here, there's been at least one of those attacks every day in the past few months. They say this village is friendly, so it's less dangerous. But whenever they can, they swap helmets for soft hats as a sign of reassurance. OK, guys, we're of a non-aggressive posture. OK, one arm on the weapon. We're always looking for uh, anything that's uh, against coalition forces out here, but primarily we're here to give confidence to the locals, so we're, you know, by giving confidence to them, hopefully they'll look after us as well. In this village, it appears to be working. Thank you. Under Saddam, Iraq's Shiite majority was kept from political power and economic opportunity. For them, regime change was welcome. Thank you. How are you? Ali Hussein, a driver, says he can now feed his four children, that democracy is changing their lives. If you ask everyone about the elections, I think... Uh, I think is good, very good for us, for Iraqi. In Shia villages like this, the British forces have become the acceptable face of an army that has delivered them a measure of political control. It's a far cry from Baghdad and the Sunni-controlled areas, where US methods have led to far greater chaos and bloodshed. American is very dangerous. Anyone ask him about American, American very he says they are very dangerous. Dangerous for Iraqi people? For Iraqi people, for everyone. Why is that? Why? I think they are, they are afraid, afraid from Iraqi people. But the British army, those feeling about the Iraqi like the friends, they don't come by those power and those weapons. No, they expect us. Respect. Respect us. Okay. Yes. Our movement around Basra was totally secured by the British armed forces. Without it, we just couldn't work here. Travelling around Basra with 15 or so British soldiers is one thing. But it's still too dangerous for us to go out by ourselves and speak to people independently. So to get a better idea of what's really happening on the streets of Basra, we've commissioned a local journalist to collect what he could. Armed with a small camera, our reporter revealed lives overshadowed by crime and fear. يقدمون عمل جيد للمواطن العراقي في البصرة. الحالات الخطف 
حالات التسليب حالات الخطف يعني كثرت بشكل لا يوصف في البصرة حالات خطف الأطفال ابتزاز الناس بالأموال من غرض إرجاع أبنائهم لهم أو اختطاف الشخصيات اختطاف المقاولين رجال الأعمال هذه سبب حالات إرباك سبب حالات قلق نفسي للمواطن في البصرة صحيح هذا الشيء نحس به ونعرفه ونقدره انه اخذنا حريتنا كشيعه لكنه حريتنا بالسير في الشارع بامان حالنا حال العراقيين ما تغيرت To improve that security, British forces are urgently training up local police. But for a few hundred dollars a month, this is a dangerous job. Across the country, insurgents now kill more Iraqi police and troops than foreign forces. I think it's probably an attempt to try and undermine their confidence. In order to us to be able to withdraw, they need to be totally confident in their ability to deliver security. And I suspect the, um, the radical elements that are still working out there have identified um, that, you know, that, that that's, that's an issue that, that they, can, they can target. Ishan Kazim, father of five, is one of the new recruits. But why take the risk? وإن شاء الله يحسون معنى الحرية خلال المستقبل بعد ما تصير حكومة جديدة. What do you tell your children when you go to work then? أقول لهم أتمنى لي أن أرجع لكم سالم. إيه وكل ما أروح أشتاق لهم من أرجع فيتفخر إنه يشوف من جديد. That resolve will be tested on the streets. Those already here also need training. And today, that's a job for Britain's Sergeant Mark Hill and his men. This patrol is, is arts and minds, getting to know the locals, getting to uh, reassure them with the Iraqi police with us. And to reassure the public that the police uh, within Basra are, are worthy. The training is clearly needed, but many appear keen. Yeah, you are right, it's danger, but we uh, want to serve the people. We, we attention. We attention the uh, vehicles. But they do get hit and leave base cautiously for good reason. Almost every day, a police car is blown up by a roadside bomb in Basra. Once a location is chosen, troops first check for bombs, then open a checkpoint for cars. Looking for vehicle bombs within the city itself, any type of explosives to make bombs, any weapons. Like I said earlier, this is a gun culture. A lot of people have weapons. Fairly dangerous, though, isn't it? I mean, if anybody did have a car bomb, you'd be a prime target, wouldn't you? We would here. But as you can see, the layout of the VCP, we've got cuffs left and right. Uh, the police are helping out in that to uh, see anything coming towards us, and then the cuffs will give a, a warning and we'll take over. Why should Sergeant Hill has learned enough Arabic to do his job. It puts people at ease, he says, and helps break the ice. But teaching new police old tricks takes time. <laughs> As we're filming, a vehicle that slipped through the checkpoint is stopped by Sergeant Hill's men. This is Avi Teftish Serat. Teftish Serat. Shirt Iraqi wa Jay Tutani. A Fatish a Siara. Siara Mufakaka. Siara Mufakaka. We know, we know. We're not going to get out of here. We're not going to get out of here. The men are members of the local government. They resent being stopped while escorting a Shia religious leader. 
But the police translator, Wissam, wants to pass on what many in Basra fear this represents, the rise of religious extremists. In Basra, it's better than any city in Iraq. But it will be... It will be danger, a danger, uh, the situation is danger if Islamic parties is still here. This is the great fear of both the occupying forces and the interim Iraqi government, that fundamentalist Shia parties will step into the vacuum and take control. These Islamic parties are already here. This is the Basra headquarters of Skiri, one of the Islamic parties that won most of the seats in Iraq's January elections. It's a Shia religious party set up by Iraqis in the Islamic Republic of Iran when the two countries were at war in the 1980s. This would be the perfect way for that too. Its local chairman, Salah Ismail Bada al Batat, is keen to play down any hardline fundamentalist policies to a point. Now, Skiri was founded in Iran. Many people are suspicious that you are in fact a proxy for Iranian policy and influence in the country. للأسف هذا الموضوع يطرح من أكثر من مكان. نحن لم تكن ولادتنا إيرانية بل نحن أبناء العراق وقرارنا عراقي ومصدرنا عراقي وسياستنا عراقية The West hopes extremist aspirations will be tempered by secular Iraqis and Kurds. But Skiri does receive funds and training from Iran. Its promises of spiritually sanctioned order have wide appeal here in the Shiite slums. Many Basrans already see religious extremism and foreign interference as part of their daily lives. Our local reporter spoke to Adel Ali, a school teacher who recently lost his 21 year old son when he was killed by a roadside bomb. Like most Shia, Adil voted in the elections, but he voices a view widely held here that the violence is being perpetuated by neighbouring countries opposed to democracy taking root in Iraq. Many believe fighters and funding are coming from countries like Syria. But it's the influence seeping across this desert frontier with Iran, just 20 kilometers from Basra, that worries them most. Iranians believe they have the right to support their fellow Shia Muslims in Iraq. Uh, we're very concerned with the uh, porous nature of the border at the moment. Captain Rob Armstrong leads one of the British units trying to secure the frontier. As the uh, seasons dry up and the uh, banks of, of the canal become um, firmer, we often see makeshift crossing points being forced across. Coming across that border is not just influence but weapons, among them rocket-propelled grenades. There is evidence of uh, weapons coming across. Um, it's only a matter of weeks ago, we uh, had a find here of uh, some 40 RPGs that were uh, new, almost in their wrappers still, uh, a number of Soviet and Chinese variants. Mm. Where were they headed for? Uh, I suspect they're probably moving into Basra City. 
Whether it's officially sanctioned by the Iranian government or freelance arms smuggling, the fear is such weapons are heading into the hands of these men. This is the Mehdi army, followers of the radical cleric Muqtada al-Sada, parading in the middle of Basra just a couple of months ago. It has twice fought British and US forces, inflicting casualties nationwide. The Mehdi army is close to Iran and to a group with known Iranian backing, Hezbollah. The army is in a truce with the coalition forces, but is believed to be rearming and regrouping. There's a religious element here. I mean, clearly, with the religious influence coming from across Iran to various factions here in, in Basra and in the south, some more radical than others. Um, but it's, it is still, I think, I think still fair to say that it's the minority. But the Mehdi army's political wing, the Office of Muqtada al sadr or OMS, has its roots in the Shia majority and is a steadily growing force. Are these religious militia that people suspect are backed, I mean, are they backed by Iran? I, I think un un undoubtedly they are. In terms of funding, arms, I, training? I, I think undoubtedly. Um, and uh, that, that inevitably there is, there's a, there is influence and, and help coming from, from that side. Both cash and, and weapons? I think, I think inevitably, yes. Mm. That's yeah. pretty concerning though, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I think we'd be very naive to think that they're not going to have an interest in what's going on here. The OMS did take part in Iraq's January elections but is now stepping up calls for foreign troops to go home. While we were in Iraq, our local reporter filmed these men preparing to join an anti-US rally of 300,000 people. And OMS spokesman Sayed Haider Al-Gabiri had this message for our camera. Back on the streets, British troops are patrolling one of Basra's busiest markets. Any one of these people could be an enemy seeking a close-range kill. There's always the risk of being snatched at any one point. It's very tense and it's a very hard work. While they welcomed the election, two years after invasion, patience is wearing thin. The people are a bit peeved, as you saw this morning. Where's the fresh water? Where's the electricity? Who's going to clean up the streets? And I spoke to them, and it's not the British forces or the multinational forces' job to do that. Reconstruction will rely on Iraq's oil money. But at night that oil is instead flowing from the country illegally. When Iraq's two great rivers join, they create the Al Shat Arab. And it's down this waterway on these boats that untold millions are being lost through fuel smuggling. The crude oil here is like potatoes to the Irish, because there's so much of it. To refine it is easy, to then sell it abroad is even easier. Iran, Dubai, um, they make a lot of money on the fuel they're selling. Because of that, people are reluctant to give it up. Small time is keeping families going, big time is keeping people wealthy. This massive illegal trade accounts for 60% of Basra's economy. The British are trying to help local police stem the tide, but with such sums involved, it's still a losing battle. They must have gone strange, that house, Perky. Um, 
Yeah, there was one in black and looked like one in um, grey or white or a lot lighter colour. Does anyone need the interrupter? It's in this security environment that 450 Australian troops have now deployed. Based here at Camp Smitty, an hour's chopper ride west of Basra, which we visited just a few days before their arrival. It is on paper Iraq's safest province, but a few minutes on the ground show it is not devoid of danger. On the 27th of March there was a rocket attack from the camp approximately four kilometres to the north. The rocket flew over the camp and landed 300 metres on the southeast uh, corner. Uh, the rocket did not detonate. Uh, therefore, we expect mortar attacks to happen on the camp any time after 1900 hours, between 1900 hours and 2100 hours. It's not a regular occurrence, but blast shelters are being built just in case. The very deployment of a new force could attract attack. And there's this view from the OMS. For any forces going into Iraq, the Australian base is the safest place to be. But with local patients wearing thin and extremist parties ready to exploit any unrest, that safety is still far from guaranteed in today's Iraq. Ich 